knowledge is power. Uh, and uh, sometimes I'd, I'm not sure that's exactly true. I, I would say wisdom is power. Well, applied knowledge is power there might be go. a better, you can have. But that's boring. Yeah, that's true. That's a boring you, you can have knowledge and not apply it, as right. we see almost every single day. That's right, because <laughs> people are stupid. <laughs> the, the, Here's your sign. <laughs> The interesting thing about this is this is our tagline for Divorce University Online. It's Divorce University Online because knowledge is power. So I, I really like the concept that knowledge is power, but again, you have to actually apply it. I think sometimes we get we get into a gathering mode and we're gathering knowledge, gathering knowledge, gathering knowledge. But if we don't actually put that into practice, you know, Brendan Bouchard Bersart, always likes to say common sense is not always common practice. That's yeah. true. That's so true. You got to actually move into using your knowledge. And I think knowledge is important in divorce because most people don't just have a font of knowledge around divorce. So where does our knowledge start? Well, a lot of times it starts from some guy that you that you hang out with who got a divorce and got completely screwed. And that guy will normally tell you that you should go to his ex-wife's attorney <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of times right <laughs> right I think, oh i saw you in court did a great job for my you know so we've had that happen where yeah. somebody's ex-spouse referred a new person to us we've had that happen yeah but really don't listen to your friends and family because their interests are not really aligned with yours right you know they they want to help certainly right and they want to, uh, yeah, but they're not gonna. Yeah, they're gonna. They're gonna be too supportive in a way. They're gonna. Right. They're gonna say, "You need to get in there and fight for your rights because you know you got to stand up for you." And I'm gonna help. I'll be right here by your side. Of course, they won't give you any money, but. Right. And <laughs> when we're saying knowledge, you know, and education, we're talking about like objective education from you know, neutral sources. I, I think that, um, you know, one of the things that, that we see too is like, you know, a client will call and say, well, you know, I was talking to my neighbor down the street and her husband makes the same thing that I do. So why does she have double the amount of support as me? Yeah. And there's, you, you know, you hear questions like that and it's like, there's so many factors that go into it. You know, right. number one, how much parenting time does each person have? Secondly, how much earnings does the other spouse have? Thirdly, you know, what are you paying in health insurance? Does one person have mandatory retirement? Like if you have a police officer or teacher, or people like that, they pay into mandatory retirement amounts that are figured into the calculations. And, you know, there's all these different pieces that go into it. I would advise people, if, if you really want to know what this looks like, go down to the court and watch a request for order calendar. Mm -hmm. Watch a or, domestic violence calendar. That's well, always fun. Well, and, <laughs> and I, depending on when this is released, uh, I think we're a few weeks from this being released. So, uh, but right now, uh, as we're recording this, the hearings are virtual, at least in San Diego County. So, right. Um, so right now, you could just log on and observe. You, you can log on. They may ask you if you log on to one of our things. Usually, what I see is the 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 courts are asking that person what they're doing in the room. And yeah. And you just say, I'm here to observe because they're public hearings right. and you're allowed to watch. Right. And I think it's important to, to get a feel for the judge in your case and what uh, pet peeves they have. You know, what, what are their kind of, you know, we have one judge in North County uh, who uh, uh, you know, when when he's done hearing from you, he sets his pen down and stops taking notes. And if you keep talking, he lowers his glasses down to the tip of his nose and he stares at you over the top of his glasses and if you still insist on keeping talking he'll ask you if you're finished yet yeah or remind you that he already read your documents yes or <laughs> yes i've read your file sir uh, so you know you have to learn kind of these these cues uh, but that knowledge in itself is power and it, it, it's it's in a location that you normally would not 
think to find it. But you can learn a lot about what arguments work, what arguments don't mm -hmm. work. Uh, by watching Family Court. If you go to this great workshop or you attend mine and Thomas's, you know, support group or whatever you do, and you learn all these great things about how the emotions interfere and how, you know, you have to try to reframe your feeling towards your ex, but then you're going over here and you're allowing yourself to pop off at a text message and call him every name in the book, well, then you're not really applying yeah. that wisdom and you're not going to get the result you're looking for. I call those nasty grams. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. Because, because, you know, if you know something but you don't apply it, it's, it's, yeah. completely, it's completely useless. Like, it does you, doesn't do you any good. And I think sometimes we get stuck in information gathering mode you know, I, yeah. you know, I've shared before that I'm a pretty big personal development junkie, and I think Thomas is too in certain ways. But if we're listening to all that, but we don't ever apply it, it's real easy to get kind of stuck in this mode where you're absorbing, 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 absorbing from all these experts. But if you don't actually take that and try to apply it in your life, you're wasting your time. One of the things that I've found is of tremendous value is having a coach. Uh, that is somebody that can help you to take this information and apply it. Uh, when when I was going through my divorce 14 years ago, I had a coach, Brooke Olson, who helped me immeasurably. And here's the thing. You know, I went to the high conflict course, and I read the NOLA Press books, and uh, I actually read some of the practice books on divorce and and. You know, what I learned, you know, what I learned is that there are some, there's so much complexity in this area, that I need to know how to use my experts. So my divorce coach can help me to apply the knowledge I have, uh, and to get the right question put to my attorney, uh, and use that person to greatest effect. Right, because your divorce coach tends to be more of a neutral advisor. Right. You know, they don't have a dog in the fight, so to speak. They're not they're not in it to win it, you yeah. know, like your attorney can be because attorneys tend to be really competitive and kind of want right. to it's the sport of the game for them sometimes. And so they can be very much in it to win it at all costs. Yeah. You always say your attorney will fight with every last drop of your money. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> And, and really, your coach doesn't really have a dog in the fight like that because, um, you know, their advice to you isn't necessarily going to create more or less business for them. Right. And so, um, you know, you want somebody who kind of tends more in that neutral amount and where their income isn't based on how much conflict that you have with your ex-spouse. And right. then you can leverage your attorney more effectively for their purpose. Your definition of success should be, am I happy? Right. Am, you know, are my kids happy? Are they well adjusted? Right. How, you know, how are my relationships? And do I have a fulfilling means? You know, because they, don't they say that if, uh, I don't know who said this, but if, if you love your job, you never have to work a day in your life. Right. I mean, yep. is, are you happy in your career? Right. You know, that's why I'm trying to change the focus of my practice from a litigation practice to more of a coaching practice, because I find that that I can help people more in that area. Right. 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 I think it's where we add the most value. Right. And, and, it, and you know what? I lay my head on the pillow and I feel good about what I did that day. Right. I mean, how do you put a price on that? Right. Yeah, you really can't. You really, really can't. Right. So knowledge is power, but remember, you also have to apply that knowledge. So we've given you some places to get the knowledge. Um, we'd love to hear your feedback, comments on the episode, uh, things you'd like for us to talk about in future episodes. You can go out to divorceuniversityonline.com. This is episode backslash episode 115. Leave us your thoughts and feedback. Uh, you can also uh, listen to episodes 0 through 114 on the website. And there is also a link to our YouTube channel where you can subscribe Please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the podcast. These are pearls. Like it, you know, whatever <laughs> that that helps us. And yeah. uh, if you can uh, review us as well, that's always helpful because it helps 
get us up in the rankings with our podcast and helps us reach more people and be able to help more people with this issue. So, uh, so anyway, thanks for joining us and we will see you next time. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>